818 now on a Monday. Welcome back to Good Day. Now, as all eyes are on Florida and the actions of a man standing behind the stand your ground law of the Sunshine State are examined. Many of the 15 states that expanded their self-defense laws in 2005 are, are being looked at as well. Here in South Carolina, the self-defense statute basically says if you're in a home or a business and you have a legal right to be there, you may use deadly force in defense of it without the requirement to run. Now, the law is a bit different from Florida. However, nonetheless, there is uh, certainly a bill floating now around that may change the ability to protect your home and yourself. Joining us this morning, Senator Ronnie Cromer will talk about exactly what the difference is and what you, your opinion is on actually changing that 2005 law. Now, you voted for it in 05 to put that law into place. That's correct, Tyler. The 2005 law was modeled after the Florida law. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's all contained within the Castle Doctrine or Castle Law, which was the, uh, right. the old English law back in the 1700s. They came up with a man's home is his castle. Sure. And it was to allow us to be able to protect ourselves in our homes and on our property. But in 2005, based on the Florida law, about 20-something uh, states change their laws mm -hmm. to give you the right to protect yourself anywhere if you are not there unlawfully, if you're in a public place and somebody mm -hmm. approaches you and intends you bodily harm, then you have the ability to protect yourself in any manner possible. Now, some states like Vermont, you have a duty to try to run you can't stand your ground, as it were. Um, you actually have to run. That includes your own home. You actually, if someone breaks in your house, you have a duty to at least exhaust the possibility of climbing out a window to protect yourself before you can actually stand your ground and protect your castle. That's where it's very different in South Carolina and Florida. That, that's correct. But in South Carolina, we wanted to give you additional protection and additional rights not to be sued civilly or to face prosecution if you try to protect yourself. And it's just a common sense law that you don't have to retreat. Now, you and I both know that the average person, if he sees a group of people coming toward him whom he thinks is going to cause him bodily harm, then we're going to get out of the way. Sure. Uh, and, and first of all, let me say that this uh, event that occurred in Florida was truly tragic. And uh, I understand why Representative Sellers, he's a great colleague in the uh, House there in the legislature, and I understand why he's trying to change the law here mm -hmm. based on specifically what happened in Florida. But I think that was an unusual circumstance, and I think when all the facts come out, we're going to find out that the gentleman in Florida was looking for trouble. He was certainly not trying to retreat. He was not trying to stand his ground. He was actually pursuing this young man, and the police had told him not to pursue the young man. So I think this uh, guy who shot this young man in Florida is going to be in a world of hurt uh, mm -hmm. in the next few months. Now, so you, uh, you uh, as we said, you voted for the change in the law in 2005 to put the current law into place. Uh, is it fair to say then you oppose any change if, uh, if there is a bill that's introduced by uh, Representative Sellers or any, you know, any number of your colleagues uh, in the State House? And why would you want to block that? Do you not think that maybe there can be some adjustments to account for some examples like this thing in Florida? Uh, right now, we, we debated that in 2005, mm -hmm. and I think it was uh, put on the floor by Representative Mike Pitts, who's formerly a law enforcement officer. And Mike understood, uh, he'd been involved in a lot of these dis different situations, and I think he understood the law. And Mike felt like that we would be giving additional protection to our citizens, as I said, from prosecution and from civil cases, mm -hmm. if we added this stand your ground clause into the law. And, and I, I, for one, certainly am not uh, in favor of removing that, that stand your ground. Do you, think, um, do you think that your colleagues in the Senate and the House, what do you think the feeling is? Is this going to go anywhere, or do you think this, this is a, maybe some amendments, maybe some minor changes, or it's going to fall dead in the House or the Senate? Well, certainly I think it's, uh, it's up to us to discuss it and debate mm -hmm. it. I, I think we, sh we may have some common ground there, excuse the pun, sure. but we may have some common ground with uh, Representative Sellers if we can spend time just debating it, and it might be that we could actually uh, improve it Mm -hmm. with a compromise, but uh, just off the top of my head, I would have to say that we do not want to get rid of this common sense paragraph of being able to protect yourself. Right. Now, I know that reasonableness always seems to be that, that, one, that one word, whether it's law, law enforcement, or even, even in the case like this with the standard ground law in South Carolina, it's reasonableness. Now, that was put in there by design. That's right. How, how, do you, how do you, in your mind, determine reasonableness? What is that standard? Well, I think the average person is reasonable mm -hmm. when you're using common sense. As I said earlier, 
Um, if you see someone coming at you and you're in, um, say, downtown somewhere late in the evening, you're the only person on the street, right. and you see a guy coming behind you and one coming in front of you, of you I think you're going to cross over the street or try to duck into a storefront. My wife and I had that happen in Chicago one evening, late one evening, and uh, we, we ducked into a, a bar that happened to be o open to mm -hmm. uh, call the police or at least call a cab so that we would not be attacked by these muggers. So it's just playing smart, keeping it's your head down, but sense. when push comes to shove, common, common sense. sense. All right, Senator Cromer, I appreciate your efforts. Thank you so much for having uh, me on. For the state, absolutely. Now, I know there's going to be some pretty heavy debates for both sides of the House and uh, the <laughs> House and Senate ahead on both sides of the aisle. It will be, and I look forward to it.